Okay, I'm going to answer this. I've answered it before about uh, he who endures to the end. Uh, it's one of the Calvinistic twisting of verses. So you got to persevere in your faith. Okay, it, we're preserved by God. It's not our faithfulness that's keeping us. Even when we believe not, he abides faithful and can't deny himself. Okay, it's always about him. Always what he does. He keeps us saved. He gets us saved. Salvation is of the Lord. So what does this mean here? Because they're saying, so you got to endure in faithfulness and obedience. And then, then at the end, if you're lucky, he'll save you. No, we can know we have eternal life now. So what is this about? This is about the time. Now, a lot of people are preterists. They don't believe the time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. Now, there was a time in 70 AD. It was a terrible time. Uh, but that is not the end days because this is about when he is to return, when Jesus returns, his second coming. And they ask him that. So this is the very tribulation during Israel endures in the last days. All right, let's hear it here. Now, uh, the part about the temple being having no stone on top of another that has occurred that happened in 70 AD now Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple and Jesus said unto him see ye not all these things verily I say unto you there shall not be left one here stone uh, left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down the Rome uh, they set it afire the gold started melting it got in the insides of the stones and they started digging up the very stone foundations there was no stones left because the Roman soldiers were trying to get the gold all right and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be okay there's that part about the the temple then he says and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world or the age all right this is about his coming now jesus is second coming now he's talking to israel all right he hasn't yet died been buried and rose again so the mystery of the cross has not been revealed yet all right that's revealed in parables and in shadows all through the old testament all right and then we know that because he says you seek the scriptures and in them you think you have eternal life but they are which testify of me all right and then it's revealed after his resurrection openly and clearly now and jesus answered and said unto him take heed that no man deceive you okay he's about to tell him what's going to happen right before he returns his second coming before he comes for israel all right remember he does have a millennial kingdom I don't care if you guys disagree. I believe the kingdom is within us and we can physically manifest that, that now. But I also believe in a literal millennial kingdom on earth because God has promised it to the nation of Israel. Not because they are so faithful, because there's a remnant of Israel that he keeps when the 144,000 uh, evangelists, 12,000 from each 12 tribe of Israel, evangelize all of Israel and there is a remnant that Israel will be saved. So you can disagree with it, think over-spiritualize it, turn it into whatever, Gnosticism, but I believe it's literal. I don't need to hear you say, no, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's good. I don't care, that's my opinion. You don't need to try to convince me that it's already happened and all, okay, it's not, I don't even teach that stuff. I'm trying to show you here what this is in context, all right? And he says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That doesn't mean they're going to say, I'm the Christ. It's saying they're going to admit he's Christ, okay? And they'll deceive many because they're coming in Christ's name. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. This is the Jews, Israel, the Hebrews, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all the nations for my name's sake. Okay, this is not the body of Christ, people. This is the Jewish and Hebrew people, the 12 tribes of Israel. And then, because it says he came first to the lost sheep of Israel, and he did. Hold on one second, Jim. I don't like it when you interrupt while I'm trying to do this, sweetheart. Hold on. Okay. Sorry, we had a flashlight crisis. All right. All right, it says, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Okay, if you are enduring, surviving, when he returns, you will be saved. Okay, it's talking about people being killed and all of this stuff happening to them. Okay, 
That's it. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. The gospel of the kingdom. Okay? Remember, he's going to rule a physical kingdom. It is a spiritual kingdom also because it's within us. But it's a kingdom. The kingdom is coming. Thy will be done there. Uh, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, we can manifest that kingdom spiritually and, you know, physically within ourselves. But there is a literal kingdom. It makes, it, you don't make, you know, spiritualized things that are clearly literal things. You just don't. Okay. And unless it has, this is a vision, this is a metaphor, or this is a symbol. Okay. When it's clear and, and, and makes sense the way it is, don't change it. All right. I'm sorry if you don't agree. I, I don't want to hear all of this preterist stuff. I've researched all of it. All right. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Now that did happen once with Antiochus Epiphanes. He brought in Zeus, which is Satan, in there and did a, a, a pig sacrifice. Okay? But this is not that time. He's talking about the second coming of Christ. So this hasn't happened yet. And he says, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains and let him who's on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field turn back to take his clothes. And woe to them that are with child and them that give suck in those days. So he's warning all the people of the perilous times and they can die. But if you're enduring or surviving when he returns, you'll be saved because he's going to come. All right? He's saying these are the signs to look for. That's all. This is not about the body of Christ enduring in their faithfulness and obedience. I'm just sick of it. All right? We got to know who it's talking to and in what context. All right. God bless.